Five days after a drone attack against an American military logistics outpost in Jordan killed three soldiers and wounded more than 30 others, the U.S. has retaliated with airstrikes using Air Force B-1 bombers operating from their base in the continental United States. According to a statement from the U.S. Central Command, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on February 2nd, forces conducted airstrikes in Iraq and Syria against Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, Quds Force, and affiliated militia groups. That timing means the American bombs hit shortly after President Biden and the First Lady were at Dover Air Force Base, attending the dignified transfer of the remains of the three soldiers killed by the drone attack on Tower 22, the name of the outpost hit in Jordan. The Pentagon has identified those soldiers as Sergeant William Jerome Rivers, 46 years old, of Carrollton, Georgia, Specialist Kennedy Ladon Sanders, 24 years old, of Waycross, Georgia, and Specialist Brianna Alexandria Moffat, 23, of Savannah, Georgia. All three were in the U.S. Army Reserve attached to the 718th Engineer Company based at Fort Moore, Georgia. According to the National Counterterrorism Center, the IRGC is the Iranian state's armed force charged with defending Iran's revolutionary regime. It is separate from Iran's conventional military force. The IRGC Quds Force is responsible for conducting covert lethal activities outside of Iran, including asymmetric and terrorist operations. Iran views terrorism as a tool that it can use to assert leadership over Shia Muslims worldwide and project power in the Middle East. The IRGC has between 150,000 and 190,000 personnel. The IRGC Quds Force has between 5,000 and 15,000 personnel, handpicked from the broader IRGC for their competency and allegiance to the regime. The B-1 Lancer, nicknamed Bone because that's the word you get when you combine B and 1, was fielded during the mid-1970s as a strategic bomber designed to ingress at low altitude and high speed to defeat Soviet radar coverage. Between the Cold War ending and the post-9-11 wars kicking off, the B-1 was morphed into a long-range, high-altitude precision guided munitions platform capable of dropping upwards of 24 Joint Direct Attack Munitions, JDAMs, from three large weapons bays on a single sortie. The B-1 features swing wings and is capable of supersonic airspeeds courtesy of its four General Electric F-101 engines, which is basically the same motor the B and D versions of the Tomcat had. The B-1s are based at Dias Air Force Base in Texas and Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota, which is very close to Mount Rushmore, by the way. There are two squadrons at each base, which totals up to approximately 70 bombers across the Air Force. Social media started to light up with indications of the pending strikes early on February 2nd, with military aficionados posting flight path info assumed to be the B-1s and their in-flight refueling support en route to the Middle East. It appears the bombers hit the tankers at least twice each way, off the coast of Nova Scotia and near the Strait of Gibraltar on the western edge of the Mediterranean Sea. The distance from either B-1 base to Iraq's western border with Syria is approximately 6,500 miles. And you can see from the timestamp of the tweet that documents the Nova Scotia tanking evolution at 10.08 Zulu, combined with a CENTCOM release that states the strikes occurred at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 2100 Zulu, that the mission lasted more than 11 hours each way. Those early tweets about the B-1's transit caused a number of military experts to cry OPSEC violation, while others countered with the assertion that leaking the information was part of DOD's plan, and that their intelligence fusion could watch how the IRGC responded to the heads-up by moving stuff around, which would allow those locations to be targeted during any follow-on strikes. The strikes involved seven areas, four in Syria and three in Iraq, hitting 85 targets using 125 JDAMs. This is a lot more firepower than what was brought to bear during previous post-October 7th strikes into those two countries, and the first time they've been hit simultaneously. The exact number of B-1s involved is unknown, but doing the math around the number of JDAMs each bone can carry, it could have been as few as six airplanes. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal wrote that the Jordanian Air Force was assigned targets associated with this mission, but there was no evidence beyond that to support that claim. CENTCOM stated that the facilities that were struck included command and control operations centers, intelligence centers, rockets, missiles, and unmanned aerial vehicle storages, and logistics and munition supply chain facilities of militia groups and their IRGC sponsors who facilitated attacks against U.S. and coalition forces. 
More specifically, Deir Azor 24, a local outlet in Iraq, reported that the strikes hit militia sites in the al Mayadeen and al Qurya deserts, the Iraq-Syria border crossing at al Humada, an IRGC weapons depot in the al Sana neighborhood in the city of al Mayadeen, the headquarters of the IRGC-affiliated Abu Abbas Regiment Militia, and a barracks in al Mayadeen, a radar installation on a mountain that overlooks the airport at Harabesh, and military warehouses around Deir Azor. Iraqi officials claimed the strikes caused 16 casualties, both civilian and military. The White House stated that they coordinated the strikes with the Iraqi government ahead of time, but the Iraqis deny that, saying that they didn't know and they were misled by the Americans. This dynamic between the two countries is increasingly complicated, and immediately following the strikes, the Iraqi government said that the U.S. forces have deviated from the original mission of providing security and stability in the region post-ISIS and has become a source of instability. The spokesman for Iraq's commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Yahya Rasul, said, quote, The strikes are a violation of Iraqi sovereignty and undermining of the efforts of the Iraqi government, and a threat that will drag Iraq and the region into unforeseen consequences, the consequences of which will be dire for security and stability in Iraq and the region, end quote. In addition to the attack on the Tower 22 outpost in Jordan, this latest American strike follows a reported 165 attacks against U.S. forces in the region since October 7th, 98 of which have occurred in Syria and 66 in Iraq. And in spite of the pushback from the Iraqi government officials, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has stated that the B-1 strikes yesterday are just the beginning of the American response, which he said will take place, quote, at a time and place of our choosing, end quote. We will continue to report events and provide analysis as the information becomes available, so make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.